There's been a lot of success stories globally, but in many cases, there's been many more challenges. It's been really exciting over the last couple of years to see how banks have been trying to innovate. However, it's not easy. There's been a lot of success stories globally, but in many cases, there's been many more challenges. Many of them, you know, many banks have tried innovation teams to try to bridge the gap between what's happening in the fintech world and the banking world. There's been numerous success stories, many banks being able to integrate fintech inside the organization. But there's been, but there's been also a lot of failures. For example, if you just want to innovate and launch an innovation team just for publicity purposes or PR, not give them any budget, not give them any authority, not give them any decision-making power, I can tell you it doesn't work. But one of the big reasons for that has not been the fault of innovation team, has not been the fault of anybody at the, at the bank. Some of the big problems have been the legacy infrastructure. The layers and layers of all technology stacked on top of the other for the last 30, 40 years. What I like to call the spaghetti of the bank. And this has been actually quite challenging because even if you think about it, a lot of the banks today, 95% of ATM transactions and one core banking system out of two it still relies on COBOL, a programming language that was drafted in the 1950s and 60s. The problem we have right now is nobody remembers how to code using this language. 60% of actually coders in COBOL are over the age of 45, which is very old for a programmer.